and welcome to another Coach Dave Academy Lap Guide. I'm Kieran Harrison and this is the first lap guide that I'm doing for the new season. Uh, this week we're in the Aston Martin GT4 for week one at Charlotte Motor Speedway. Uh, we're on the Roval but with the, the fast chicane on the back straight. Um, so without further ado, let's, let's just get started. So that was it, that was the full speed lap around Charlotte in the, the Aston GT4. I'm now going to walk you through a replay um, of, the, of the same lap and I'm going to point out all the, the braking points and driving lines and in, for this track that particularly how, how to take the kerbs. Um, so yeah, let's, let's get started. We're just here before the final chicane. Just thought I would mention that it's worth, if you're setting up a lap for quality or something, it's not such a, a race tactic. It's definitely best just to break early for this so that you can go slow through the first part and then really get a good good exit and just get on the power hard um, because the normal line right over this curb you kind of sacrifice a bit of exit speed but yeah to start a quality lap you should uh, maximize the exit anyway coming up to the first corner uh, you've got to be careful because the track turns as you're looking at the apex yourself but I'm mostly aiming to break just on this two board just as I've just as it's gone past my driver's eye point of view, um, I'm starting to brake, um, and it's just a gentle brake uh, down to fourth, I believe. Um, you're aiming at the the red and white curb on the apex. You don't want to hit the blue curb, at least not too much, because it spits the car out towards the wall, and then you have to get out the power. Uh, but if you if you just get it slowed down nicely, you want to get you want to slow it down enough so that you can really focus on the exit through here. Uh, so you can just go really hard on the power as you can see actually i had to do a small lift there just to make sure i didn't run too wide but in an ideal situation you would stay flat um through this one it's nearly flat as you can see i'm doing a little lift on the entry um and through the middle of the corner i think sometimes you can you could get it flat but it's a bit of a risk with this outside wall uh, and you don't really lose much time because it allows you to set up the next corner better anyway if you do a, a small lift so I prefer to just have a small lift. For this one, I don't have a specific reference. Um, I'm just aiming it at this apex um, and breaking, I guess, about halfway between where this wall ends and where the apex is. Something like that. Yeah, just, just as you're coming up towards the bridge. There's not really a specific reference I'm using. But again, here we're just going down to fourth gear. Uh, you don't want to hit the blue curb on the inside. You want to carry quite a lot of speed through the entry uh, so that it runs wi out wide in the middle. You want to probably put two wheels on this bit just to widen the corner. But if you go all four wheels, you notice the camber of the track is sort of against you as soon as you cross over the white line. So you do want to keep two wheels inside of that to help the car rotate. Um, and then again, we're aiming for the, the red and white curb. You don't want to hit the blue curb, uh, as you can see here. And you can get really hard on the power. You can see how early I get on the power here. Um, if you manage to slow it down properly so you can focus on the exit, uh, the car gets good enough traction just to plant the power and go. Uh, we can use all of this track here. Um, this is within track limits on this circuit, so you don't have to worry about where the white line is. Just use all of this tarmac to the left of it. The grass is the real track limit. Um, for this one, my breaking point is actually the curb, the, the first apex. Um, 
just turning in quite late and quite hard so that I'm quite well rotated by the time I get to the curb. Um, as you can see now, I'm lifting and braking just as I'm about to hit the curb. Um, this one is a tricky one, so I'd suggest braking a little earlier uh, when you're first learning the track because you're turning and braking quite hard and it's quite easy to run off into the grass on the outside. Uh, but I'm going down from 5th to 3rd for this one. Um, and to be honest, there's a, there's a few different lines you can take. If you, if you go shallow, you kind of gain speed on the entry and lose a bit on the exit, but it works out similar to if you run all the way out and get a good like cutback line through the apex. This one I'm sort of in the middle, I'm not using all of the track, but not too shallow either. Um, the apex is the wall. The curb you can run over, this tarmac's fine to use, um, but equally if you're just using the curb, it's safer and not really slower. Um, this one's actually third gear, so you've got to be a little bit more careful on the power, especially because we're coming over a crest and turning, but still pretty easy to get to full throttle. Fourth through this one, I'm flat through here until the compression, really. And then I'm starting to lift just because if you let it run wide, too wide too early and you end up getting sucked out towards the wall um, and then even if you just glance the wall with the rear of the car it turns you out and then you don't make the next apex so it's kind of a balancing act because you don't want to slow down too early and end up too too tight because it hurts you run under the oval but equally you've got to avoid the wall this one I get quite close to the wall which is what I'm aiming for um, and this is about the point here where the apex actually comes into view you're kind of guessing to this point you can see it just appear in there um, for this one you want it you definitely need to focus um, on having it slow enough that you, once you get on the power you can stay on the power because you really need a good exit onto the back straight well the oval banking and then the back straight um, I found that when I when I nailed the exit onto here it was worth tenth tenth and a half at least so there we're just trying to get as close as we can to this wall without being too risky um, and then full throttle onto the oval. You've just got to trust. You get used to how much you can trust the banking to help the car rotate so that you won't hit the wall. Do get fairly close, but not, not too bad on this one. And then obviously with the oval, you just want to get down to the bottom as soon as you can and run down the bottom. Um, now coming up to this chicane on the back straight, this is probably the most, or at least one of two most awkward points on the track. Um, when I first came to do this, this car this week, I, I, I was expecting the other chicane, which you may have done, which is a lot slower. Uh, but this one's a really high speed one with big curbs on all four apex points. Um, and I'm just going to I'm going to show you and then rewind because it's quite it's quite aggressive. So the rough strategy I'm using, you don't really need to come out all the way here. It's probably best to enter from more mid mid right rather than middle or right somewhere in between um, just so that you don't have to like rotate the car too far to the left before turning back to the right. You want to take a little bit of this blue curb and lifting and braking just a little bit just before we hit it. Um, but as, just as you're about to hit it, you need to start turning the car back towards the right. You can use these curbs on the inside, especially the red and white bits. Um, See, so yeah, I'm fully off the throttle here, but only only briefly. After this apex, I think I get back to the throttle quite quickly. Mid corner, I'm mid throttle, and I'm on the red curb already on the right. Um, you can actually nibble at this blue curb it, because because that side of the car is unloaded it takes it quite well um, but the really violent one is this exit curb um, you can see at this point that I'm full throttle so I'm not worried about this wall I know that I'm already going to make it past the wall but something to note with this curb is although you can take all of it as I do on this occasion um, it does seem to maybe 20 to 30 percent of the time break the suspension I don't really know exactly what causes it so if you're in a race situation it's probably best to take a little bit less of the curb um, I think it's if, if the car comes off this and it bounces down to the ground just as it hits the blue curb it seems to just over compress the front left suspension and it breaks the car um, but yeah on this occasion we get away with it and fly through there it's we can stay stay full throttle the car gets great traction so you don't need to worry about that and then just try and stay tight as you can through this oval part Coming into the last chicane, this one's also very tricky. Um, so we, we can use some of this AstroTurf on the left, as you can see here, but you can't use all of it. You see the line going around uh, that follows the track edge. You definitely can't use anything behind, but if you use all of this darker green part, you do get an off-track. So I think you can put about half the car onto it. You can see I'm putting, yeah, maybe half the car beyond the white line. 
And you want to do that and sort of follow the line around while you're braking. Um, you can still brake quite hard because this car's not too sensitive to that with the ABS. You can brake quite hard to get it slowed down. Um, for this first part, you want to take just a little bit of curb because it, it, you can get an off track on the inside and it does upset the car anyway if you take more. But for the second part, you can really chunk the curb, as you, you'll see that I do. Um, pretty much the whole car goes over the curb, and you don't get an off track for it if you get it right. Um, but despite that, how violent it is, you can actually you get really good traction. So you're in fourth gear, you can pretty much just stay flat over that second part. So I'm, I'm flat pretty much as soon as the car touches down. And it just grips, it's fine. Um, as, long as, you, as long as you come in through this at the correct angle, you should stay out the wall pretty easily. So you can see at the, at the biggest point, I'm right over the curb. My, my right wheels aren't even on the track, but it's legal within the track limits that iRacing sets. So you definitely want to be using that because it just helps you get a much better run out onto this straight, albeit a short one, but it's still valuable. Uh, but yeah, as long as you stay out the wall, that brings you to the end of the lap. Um, and then you start all over again. So there we have it. That was the, the full lap guide for the Aston GT4 for week one of the GT4 Challenge, uh, which this week is going to be at Charlotte Roval. Um, the key thing to, with this this week is more... It's, I think it's going to be more about the curbs than the car. Um, you've got the, the last two chicanes, which are particularly tricky. Um, this one here that you can see on the screen, the, the one on the back straight, is it's so close to being flat out. It's really fast. Uh, which makes it quite difficult to get the line right. Um, and as I said in, in the lap guide itself, the you might have to tone it down how much curb you take on the exit in the race just to make sure the car survives, because uh, you you can get suspension failure through that last part. Um, and, and the same story in in the final chicane, which is just about making sure you get the curbs right to to maximise the lap time. Uh, but yeah, thanks for tuning in to another Coach Dave Academy lap guide. Um, it's not just me that does these. We we have a range of drivers doing them for a range of different cars each week. Um, so for for any more information you want on, on lap guides or setups, script, subscriptions and things, uh, just check out the Coach Dave website or the Discord and you'll find everything you need. Uh, but that's it for me for this week, so I'll see you in the next one.